Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. So, the PS5 controller was revealed. How was your reaction? At first I was uncertain, but after 14 tough minutes, I fell in love. The futuristic look with the quality of life improvements and a real sense of next generation hardware. I decided to look back through Sony's patents in the past and previous info about the device, allowing us to spot 21 things you didn't know about the PS5 controller. Let's see how many you knew. Please think about subscribing for more PS5 breakdowns as we approach launch date. Where would be the best place to start? Just like any man, I'm going to start with size. As we haven't been given exact details on size, I decided to line up the PS4 DualShock controller with a PS5 DualSense controller, using the thumbsticks and face buttons as reference for size. We can instantly see that the handles are slightly wider with a curved effect, making the product take note from PS4 feedback over the years, improving the levels of comfort on the PS5. Also note that the protruding underside of the thumbsticks is now moulded away into the body. This could make room for rear control paddles, but we'll talk about that in a little while. While we are here, notice the shoulder buttons and how they are more rounded to fit the different grip we'll be using on PS5. It looks like comfort for all gamers is the clear focus on the DualSense controller. Flip the controller onto the other side and we can see changes in size in detail. The PS5 controller removes the dip near the top of the controller. This will actually improve your response time as there is a smaller movement needed to move your finger onto those triggers. And to add to that, the DualSense controller will be the first PlayStation controller to have zero buffer between the shoulder and trigger buttons. It's a tiny, minute change that will make a huge difference in gaming. The ease of switching between the two, and get this, the potential of pressing both at the same time. That hasn't been possible before, so that could be a new element to be implemented by game designers. Next, we'll take a look at those face buttons. The sacred symbols have lost their colour in a remarkable move away from branding choice. This is not the first time though. If you have a PlayStation Portable or a PS Vita, take a look at those buttons. The colour was already removed. And this is where the PS5 controller takes inspiration, using the same clear plastic on the D-pad and the four face buttons, giving the design a more minimal feel. In game, this also gives developers an option to remove the button prompts which don't suit their colour scheme. A bright pink push square icon can take us out of the immersion of a game, whereas a soft grey colour will keep us in the moment. A small but great update comes on those thumbstick grips. The speckled rubber grips have been subtly updated on the PS5. The centre circle resembles last generation, but look at what are around the edges a star-like triforce of bumps. These are here to give us additional grip when we are in those sweat-inducing moments in many games. The excuse that your hand slipped off the controller is no longer an issue. Well, we'll see about that, so we now have an extra textured grip. We can take this point further too. Flipping the controller over, we can see the bottom half of the controller is made up of a rougher plastic, maybe even rubberized, to give additional grip. It's a small point, but you'll be surprised how big the industry around rubberized controller skins is. This controller, simply put, is too beautiful to be covered up. Now's a good time to note the PS5 controller, just like the PS4, has an inbuilt battery which we will need to charge. It may be difficult to see, but the port we use is a USB-C port, and not the OG micro USB from last generation. But what the hell does that mean? Well, here's what you need to know. Micro USB was brought in to do pretty much anything. It's quite a ubiquitous piece of kit. Well, now in the world of USB 3, which by the way is blue when you look inside the USB hub, this gives us quicker data transfer rates of between 5 and 20 gigabits per second, so between 4 and 40 times quicker than the previous generation. And it's damn good at recharging batteries too. <laughs> As another great point to note, Sony have actually already shown us this design choice. Simply look at the PSVR headsets. The same colour scheme and visual layout are already here, right in front of our eyes. We simply never paid attention. Man, even the blue light is identical. So between the PS Vita and PSVR, the visual language was here all along. And yeah, to many people, the controller looks like Astrobot, or a Portal turret, or Baymax, or an Android from a David Cage game, or an Avengers time suit, or even Borat. We all see different things, that's fine. Talk to your psychiatrist about it. 
Okay, let's move on from visuals for a moment and take a look at that title, Dual Sense. As I'm sure you all know, we've called PlayStation controllers Dual Shocks for generations. This was due to two rumble motors giving us force feedback during gaming. Well, fast forward to 2020 and the Dual Shock is no more. This is the Dual Sense. The main focus is now twofold, with those rumble motors being updated and the other aspect which Sony wants to improve is sound. So let's break them down. First of all, haptic feedback and triggers. Where do we start here? Let's go with the step up from rumble. Due to a coiled system, tension can be adjusted in the triggers specifically. The best example of this comes from Sony who talk about how the tension of a bow when pulled back will mimic a real bow. More tension, more resistance to your finger as you push the button as you further draw the bow back. That sounds amazing. Using this tech, every gun we pick up will feel different, with harder to pull triggers on heavier weapons. And should a weapon jam, the haptic feedback can mimic that sensation. You likely already have haptic feedback in your life. Test it on your mobile phone right now. That button you press is not actually a button on most phones. The phone pretends it is. It tricks you into believing you've pushed it. Turn your phone off, try it for yourself. That is not a button. Unless you're still using a Nokia 3210, of course, because that's a great phone. Haptic feedback in general will evolve over this generation, and likely by the time we talk about PS6, haptic suits will exist, letting us feel every hit a character takes. I just hope you don't choose to be the bunny in The Last of Us. The whole haptic feel will run throughout the controller, allowing us to feel sensations throughout a game. For example, when using a racing game, the different textures of the road or a mud track will be completely different sensations. This, honestly, this could be brilliant. Anyway, that's half of DualSense. The other half is hearing, audio. Sony is a huge manufacturer and developer of audio technologies. In the PS5 generation of gaming, they plan to make this a huge aspect of gaming. You wouldn't think this would be possible on a controller alone, and you're right, most of this tech is actually in the console itself, but there are a few pieces of impressive tech here. First, the controller has a near field array microphone built into the controller itself. Let's quickly get our expectations completely in place. This will in no way replace plugging in a microphone and headset. And by the way, you can still use a mini jack on the controller itself. It's just a little hard to see on the images of the DualSense, but it is there, look. The inbuilt mic is where the gimmicky tech is, or it could be the greatest tech ever. Quickly, we'll be able to speak into the controller to let a friend know you're busy or you need a toilet break or something. The tech uses an array of sorts to isolate your voice and eliminate the sounds around your room. Mobile technology has used this for quite a long time, and if you have something in your house like Amazon Alexa, you have this tech in your house right now, that's how it understands you over other people in the room. Cool tech, isn't it? But let's scale this back a bit. I believe the function will be used to allow us to commentate over our video recordings and then send them to social media. I think we are going to be part of Sony's advertising campaign. Hear me out here. Remember that share button on the PS4? Well, now into the new generation, it's so good that other manufacturers are doing the same too. Look, it's here on the Xbox. Well, PlayStation have already changed this design and evolved it to the next step. This button here is the new and improved share button, named the Create button. This will be the epicenter of sharing clips, uploading to social networks, and hey, maybe even TikTok too. Hmm, maybe. Last gen, this was all about Twitch and Facebook integration, and proved to be a huge reason why new players picked up this console in particular, hence why Xbox is following suit. On the PS5, Sony will allow us to widen this ability, so expect animated GIFs of funny moments uploaded almost instantly, or go back to that near-field microphone and quickly upload a video of an epic gamer moment, complete with your own voiceover. I know I'll be doing that a lot. I apologise in advance. On the PS5, I have no doubt we will be cogs in PlayStation's social media team, for better or worse. The inbuilt microphone has also the same tech used for voice commands, once again like Siri or Alexa, and if you have the PSVR camera, you have that tech already. Voice activation tech is everywhere now, and that includes the PS5 controller. Have it ready up your favourite streaming site, or select an episode of your favourite show. I personally would love to use the microphone to instantly save my game. Just shouting PS5 save my game just before I go into a boss fight? That could really help a noob gamer like me. 
Another piece of technology Sony has worked on throughout the generation is photo mode. Have you noticed almost all first party games have this service or it is added later on in the cycle? The likelihood is that the create button on PS5 will be where this function is kept, almost certainly. I'm starting to speculate now, so we'll probably have to wait until the reveal of the PS5 UI, the user interface, before we can really look at this. And that reminds me, do you remember the PS4 UI reveal with some guy living in a surf shack? He was living the dream. I'm going to keep going down the conjecture sort of path now I'm thinking about it, as many things have popped up which are still to be confirmed, but they heavily suggest something. For one, the PS5 controller, I mean the DualSense, I'm going to have to get used to saying that, this bad boy has had its light bar removed. Back on the PS4, it was slap bang on the back of the pad. Do you remember everyone complaining about the glare on their screen? And thankfully, Sony did dim the light. But this bar had a purpose, it was so the Sony camera could see the controller to use it in game. It was essentially for a better experience. But look at the new controller, it's gone. Which suggests the DualSense will not be a functioning PSVR controller. Well not at least without an add-on or a change in tech. I did a little research and from the patents it appears Sony are moving to a different controller method for VR on PS5. We won't break that down now, because we're talking about the DualSense controller. Here's another point to take note. Earlier this year, the PS4 back buttons were introduced and have yet to be confirmed for PS5. When asked about that, Pete Hines revealed that there is indeed a back button on the controller. But as nothing is confirmed yet, this could all be smoke and mirrors. And just in case you're thinking, who the hell is Pete? Pete isn't just a random guy in the street. Pete Hines is Bethesda's vice president. He's their PR guy. He is trustworthy, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. Will there be no buttons on the back? Will there be one button on the back? Will there be room to add the PS4 buttons on the back? We shall wait and see. And finally, the potential for customization of DualSense is staggering. I'm sure by now you've seen the hundreds of mock-ups for potential colour coordinations for this tech. Almost every single one I see, I want. These things could be the ultimate collectible item. There is such a potential here. What's your favourite one so far? I kinda like the white and pink one. Man, that looks good. So there we have it, 21 things you didn't know about the PS5 controller, aka the DualSense. You can be honest, how many of these did you already know? I'll be lurking in the comments, because that's what I do in my spare time. <laughs> we'll have to wait to see if these functions become key selling points or just another gimmick in the whole cycle. I have high hopes for haptic feedback and those triggers, wow. But for every piece of brilliant tech, there are rear touch pads like on the Vita. That was weird. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time.